Well known for its clear water, diverse anchorages, and spectacular scenery, Killarney and the North Channel of Lake Huron is a freshwater boating paradise. Due to its somewhat remote location, you might think a large cruiser with overnight accommodations is required for such a trip. Well, think again. With a little help from Yamaha and Muskoka Lakes Marine, we hooked up a fancy G3 pontoon boat to see if we could comfortably boat out of Killarney for a few days. Not exactly the typical North Channel cruiser. After four hours or so on the road, we arrived in Killarney. The drive alone is almost worth it. Since we still had plenty of light, we dropped the G3 in at the local launch ramp and caught up with Kelly Mackery, general manager of the Killarney Mountain Lodge and the Sportsman Inn. Tell us a little bit about what's changed or what you're offering for boaters when they come up. Well, the first thing we did is uh, we listened and we asked them what uh, we, they wanted for facilities uh, to make it more attractive for them. And at both properties, we've been uh, making those additions and uh, improving the ones that we already had to make sure they had a, a great uh, reason to come. And then uh, adding uh, more facilities such as uh, our patio restaurants, our lounge spaces, and oyster bar, and different things to make it a really interesting experience for them. And it's paying off. We have a, a pool for their use, we have a spa, we have anything that we could think of that a, a boater might enjoy. The owner is Holden Rhodes. He's from London, Ontario, but he has uh, family roots in Killarney. He's uh, decided he wants to reinvest in the community because of all the fond memories he has. Spending most of the effort on Clarny Mountain Lodge with the addition of more rooms and more facilities and now a new convention center. While the Canada House was under construction when we were visiting, the lodge remains fully operational. Delightful new cabins and chalets maintain their rustic charm, even with a few modern updates. So Kelly, what would you say are the top three attractions for boaters to come up to Clarny Mountain Lodge? Number one is the geography. There's a fair amount of portages uh, around this area that you can do day trips to and come back and enjoy the fabulous food in the restaurant and the pub. A Red Seal chef and globally sourced wine menu will delight even the most ardent foodie. While the scenic Carousel Lounge with its wraparound waterfront view is sure to draw you in with live music, dancing, and local craft beer. Covered portage maybe is a little bit bumpy, but it's not too far across. I think we're gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, just a few minutes uh, over to our right here and then uh, uh, it's a nice protected little spot, uh, very, very quiet, there'll be quite a few boats there. Covered Portage isn't far, but you still want to check the winds. Killarney Channel is well protected, and you can almost always find relatively calm water in one direction or another. Uh, there's a, a cliff face that just a little ways in here, Okay. and as you creep on it, you go up really slow, and it goes to such a way that you see a face of a First Nations chief. You have to go slow and catch just the right angle, but sure enough. As we venture to the end of Covered Portage, we amble over to the quartzite cliff to get a closer look. Just one of a hundred spots where you can bask in the beauty and tranquility of the North Channel. Certainly one of the attractions would be the scenery and the topography and the water, but I would think that just the peacefulness and the quiet up here, that that's gotta be attracting people up. It is, yeah. It harkens back to a simpler time when electronics didn't rule our lives and we didn't need Wi-Fi and all that stuff, or our cell phones. That's a, a return to an era of grace and simplicity. I can't think of a more peaceful place to go. Most of the southern anchorages are a little bit crowded, but once you get up here, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I would imagine the further north you go, the fewer the people there are. It tends to be that, yeah. Probably the most traffic we have in uh, smaller boats, trailer bo boats, is uh, people coming up to fish. Right. We only catch big fish here. What do you mean by that? Well, we have pike and we have big muskie. And we also have salmon and three kinds of trout and bass and white fish. And we've got a fishing guide to take um, people to the spots to catch the fish. In fact, our fishing guide has never come back uh, empty-handed. So. He's never come back empty-handed? Never. He, he knows where the fish are. He can smell them. Certainly you've got a lot of uh, amenities and facilities for summer. Uh, what about the wintertime? Are you starting to attract more customers in the wintertime? It's uh, a real focus of ours. Um, we benefit from the fact that we're basically at the intersection of three major trails, so we're a natural destination. I think we're gonna have to come back up this winter and check it out. Absolutely. It's a great idea. After our visit by pontoon boat in the summer, we knew we had to come back up in the winter to check out the scenery when the lakes were frozen. And the Sportsman Inn is open all year round, catering to snowmobilers and cross-country skiers. So if you do come up, you have a great place to stay. 
Nothing can make winter go by faster than a snowmobile. You can go places you would never take a car, and the scenery is spectacular. The Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs has over 24,000 kilometers of trails that are groomed regularly. We jumped onto the C-107D heading east, and it didn't take long to find a spot to play around a bit. Our Yamaha SR Ventures have the same clean, quiet, and reliable four-stroke engine technology as their outboard cousins. It is important to investigate the ice conditions before venturing out on the frozen lakes. Conditions can change at any time, so it's best to check with the locals right away. Fortunately, we had our own guide to help us find our way back to covered portage. And just as he does in the summer, the First Nations chief keeps watch over the frozen lake in winter. Killarney is home to all the breathtaking scenery and adventure you can handle year round. So if you haven't been yet, it just might be time. Enough about winter. We thaw out and continue our tour of Killarney later in the show. Up early the next morning to catch Joe fire the cruising club cannon, we were off to Beaverstone Bay. You do have to watch the weather just a little bit. You want to make sure that you're not getting a big southerly swell, especially in a boat like this. We got clear skies and maybe four or five knots of wind for most of the day. The great thing about going to Beaverstone is there's two ways to get there. We can take the outer channel, which we did this morning, and you've got fairly exposed water and beautiful open scenery, and you can run at speed. But there's also an inner channel, a protected channel, which we're gonna use on the way back. And we're gonna make about a 42 mile loop all the way around. Now we might be up here in a pontoon boat, but this isn't any pontoon boat. This is a G3 Suncatcher Elite 326 SS. It's 26 feet long, it's a tri tune with a 300 horsepower Yamaha. It does about 45 miles an hour, which is not a bad speed for a big tri tune. But the most impressive thing about pontoons is the ride comfort. You're basically riding on two pockets of air holding the boat up. So in chop up to two feet, it's very impressive. As we pass Green Island and swing north, we get our first glimpse of the famous pink granite. These are the eroded roots of an ancient mountain range that once stretched from Georgian Bay to Labrador. They pose a striking contrast against the white quartzite. So we turned in for a closer look. One of the great things about a pontoon boat is you can sneak in with an outboard really, really close to shore. Philip Edward Island provides the shelter for Collins Inlet. It's just under 12 miles west from Beaverstone Bay through Mill Lake to the mouth of the inlet. And these protected waters are ideal for day trip cruising. There are a few cottages scattered about, but for the most part, the shoreline is natural with numerous anchoring opportunities. It's no wonder boaters of all types make this journey. This is a perfect little protected anchorage and there's thousands of them all over the place. The wind's picked up to about 12 or 13 knots, and if you wanted to find a spot to tuck away that was private and quiet, it's a perfect example. Or maybe you just want to find a spot to throw a line in and see if you can catch something. And this is really what it's all about coming up to the North Channel. As we exit Collins Inlet, we find the wind has swung to the south, generating over two feet of chop. No problem at all for the G3, though. In fact, we didn't even have to slow down. If you haven't been to the North Channel, you really owe it to yourself to venture up here. Crystal clear waters, quartzite peaks, and pink granite provide stunning views. No wonder the group of seven artists spent so much time up here. Back at the marina, we find more evidence of their recent investment. All new docks can accommodate boats up to 125 feet in length for overnight docking. Mooring fees include access to water, hydro, and pump-out services, along with the use of all resort amenities. The Boathouse store is located right at the dock should you need sunscreen or a new hat for your North Channel adventure. Outdoor activities are nearly endless, with a heated pool, bicycles, kayaks, canoes, and even sailboats available for rent, all of which contribute to a resort-like feeling. You need this kind of facility to attract cruisers from distant shores, which is one of the reasons the Great Lakes Cruising Club was back for their annual rendezvous. With over 80 boats joining the rendezvous this year, we asked a few participants what brought them back. Right around Clarny is one of the 
I think, prettiest uh, boating areas and on so many places to anchor and enjoy your boating. And I boated really all over the U.S., up and down the coast and out west, and I think it's really one of the top, top destinations for our people that want to boat. I think the biggest reason that we're up here is uh, because of the, it's God's country. Uh, Killarney is probably one of the most beautiful communities and towns that we get to visit. It's hard to describe how beautiful it really is. You, you, you have to see it, you have to visit it, you have to taste it. You know, we cruise in the good spots like BVI's and Bahamas and the San Juan Islands, but I have to say this North Channel area and part of Georgian Bay, the best cruising in the country. It was time to dig into Red's catch of the day. So I heard that Red, who cooks the fish up here, he almost never goes to the grocery store. He eats almost everything he eats out of that lake. Stuffed to the gills and looking for a spot to chill, Kelly drove us over to Sunset Rock, located on the property of local artist Pierre A.J. Sabarin. Turns out to be a popular spot. Welcome to the old jail. Hi, I'm Pierre. Pierre is a renowned local artist who quite enjoys providing short tours of his studio originally Killarney's jailhouse. So this was what it was like to be in jail in Killarney in 1886. Two cells still remain, along with an original chamber pot. Mentored at age 10 by Arthur Lismer of the Group of Seven, Pierre's style is known as en plein air painting. So I go for mood and feeling, as I'm more of an expressionist painter. I paint everything on location, and I get all of my inspiration in nature. Sadly, we head home tomorrow, but not before taking in this spectacular sunset. Killarney truly is something way out of the ordinary that must be seen to be appreciated. And the staff and facilities at the lodge make it a perfect destination for cruisers and day boaters alike. <laughs>